I we'll call to order this May the 8th, 2019 meeting of the Franklin County Commission. Roll call. Commissioner Saldemeyer. Present. Commissioner Waymeyer. Present. Chair Howard. Present. Vice Chair Dickinson. Present. Commissioner Dunn. Present. If you'll all stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please remain standing for the invocation that will be led by Lori Stevens of the Trinity United Methodist Church. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord God, be with us in this meeting as we deal with the things and business of the county. Be with the commissioners and all of the support people as they make these decisions. Be with those that have brought issues to be discussed let us all remember that this is all for the good of our county and for one another. We are taught to love our neighbor, and this is where I, we are here, is to love our neighbors. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, takes us a correspondence and organizational business. Is there anything, Derek? Take us to public comment. A citizen desiring to speak on an item not on the agenda may do so at this time. Discussion is limited to five minutes and the commission will not take action or discuss items at this time. Discussion should be limited to matters of county commission business and public comment is not permitted in regard to personnel matters or on pending legal matters. Items introduced under public comment may become agenda items at a later date. You have. Jean Hurt. Jean Hurt, 219 West 4th Street in Lending, Kansas. First of all, I want to say thank you for all you people that come down here from Kansas City today for Cecil. Okay, now, my first item is, is that I want to talk about is, I'm going to try to get all this in, my five minutes. But out here, when you go on uh, 15th Street and you go straight out towards the Revival Church, out there on Montana Road. Okay, right there, you got the road closed sign up there, but people are driving on that highway that goes across the bridge. Now, what I want to talk about is the bridge that's over I-35. Disgusting. It's not been taken care of. Out there this morning, I took pictures of the rebar exposed in that bridge. Nobody has done any patchwork on it. I don't know what you're going to do, county. I don't know. Is the, is the state going to take care of that bridge? You're going to tear it down? Or are you going to repave it? But you're going to have to do something because when I was there taking pictures, a car came by and says, hey, are they going to fix the bridge now, finally? I said, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, that's the first item. The other one is, is there's two people called me and I got to get this out because one of them is in Dunn's or in Stallmeyer's area. The other one's in Dunn's area. You both weren't here last week. You were off to the convention or wherever you were. And I hope you learned something. So anyway, but each one of them, one, one's a farmer in your area, Mr. Dunn. He had praises for you. And, and I'm glad to see that he did because what he wanted to reference there was that you had the, the guts and the right thing to do by putting a motion to give that extra $250 for the wreaths for the veterans. And then the other, th in three of you, Ian and Stallmeyer and you voted for it and the other two didn't. So I want to get that out. Now, the next thing on Stallmeyer's area, the woman talked about him was, you know, she wants to hear from you commissioners today because she's watching YouTube, she watches it. She says, I want to see if any of the commissioners, when they talk under commissioner's comments, whether or not you really know how we feel out here with all this flooding, the roads the way they are, and everything. Do you have any heart to tell the people? Do you have any heart? Because there's never been nobody do that. That's all I have. 
Uh, second. James Wallace. Same thing, James, five minutes. James Wallace, 2447 Nebraska Road. Um, last Friday, they, the road grader went down my road, part of the road, and took a little off the top. And for that, I'm grateful, but he really didn't do much. Uh, they didn't clean the ditch. They didn't move the lump of rock and mud and whatever trash you know didn't touch it so water is still running down the side of the road just like it always does and making soft shoulders making it a one lane road um they didn't lower the blade deep enough to cut out any potholes just took a little off the top like i said uh didn't put any rock on it um, I thought I was paying for a gravel road, not a dirt road. Uh, if, if I'm not going to get any rock on the road, can I get a reduction on my property taxes? I would like to know if someone told the operator to blade it that way or if he took it upon himself. And I wondered if, uh, Anybody keeping track of how many times a road has been worked on or bladed? Do you keep track of how many times a road has had ditch work and when it was done and how long it has lasted? Do you keep track of how many times a road has rock dumped on the road? Do you keep track of when the greater operator blades the road and do you keep track of how long he blades it after the dust control has been applied? Does anybody ever check the uh, greater operator's work? And are any of these figures available to the public? And if not, why not? And as far as uh, I think it was last week that the uh, Jail had to get a new water heater, a 200 gallon water heater for $20,000, $25,000. It took about two minutes to find one on the internet for a 200 gallon water heater for $5,290. That doesn't include shipping, which was $439 from A.O. Smith. That's all I got. Thanks. Wow. Okay, it takes us to the consent agenda. Items uh, on the consent, consent agenda that need considered and approved today are commission meeting minutes for May the 1st, 2019, and tax change orders in the amount of a minus $18,380.01. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Motion to approve. Have a motion. Is there a second? I would second it. Second, yeah. Mr. Stoudemire? I abstain from the minutes. Mr. Waymire? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Abstain from the minutes and yes on the. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay, takes us to items of business. Our first item of business today is to consider approval of a spatial use permit application 1903 1654 to permit the operation of a youth missionary camp at an existing farmstead in an A1 agricultural zoning district. Larry. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. As you've indicated, this uh, first item is a consideration of a spatial use permit. The Pine Commission did consider that at their meeting in April, and they have forwarded a recommendation to you for the approval subject to the findings and the conditions set forth in their draft resolution, which is also included in a draft resolution that's in your packet. We did give notice to six uh, surrounding property owners. We had six uh, people that were in attendance that were uh, objective to this, and, and we had uh, eight members that supported the uh, approval of the, the special use permit. 
as you've indicated, uh, this is a, a youth camp. We have similar facilities that are uh, permitted by spatial use permit in the uh, A1 agricultural zone. That is the zoning for the property in question here this morning. We have uh, the Prairie Star, which I think most of you are familiar with. We have the uh, Camp Chippewa, Timber Lakes, Amazing Grace, and His Way Ministries, all of which have been approved and all in an A1 zoning district uh, that have been approved through the special use permit process. And uh, I really have nothing further to add other than what's in your uh, packet. Uh, there are people here that want to testify this morning. The uh, clerk has received a protest petition that's uh, provided by state law, wherein it will take a majority, a super majority of the county commissioners to, to uh, prove an action on this matter. I have uh, nothing further unless any of you have questions of me at this time. Did you have any of the surrounding uh, neighboring come to the planning meeting when you were discussing that? Yes. You did have? Yes. And those, most of those members are present this morning and I also have signed the uh, protest petition that was presented to you. Any more questions at this time for Lily? Okay. What we're going to do is the applicant will come up right now. We're going to have you come up and talk to us about what the, uh, this and what your plans are for, for this camp and so forth. And then after that, everybody that signed up to speak on this item will be allowed their five minutes to come up in the order that you signed up and speak on the item. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity to shed some light regarding the truth about me. I'm Cecil Carter. Me and my wife, Diane, reside at 2530 Delaware Road, Pomona. Um, we've been married for 48 years, and we've lived in Franklin County for since 2016, August of 2016. <clears throat> um, You will, what you will hear today in opposition to, to what we want to do is, um, is regarding being a youth camp. We are not a camp. Thriving Oaks is a ministry um, and it uh, participates on our property at 2530 Delaware Road. Um, <coughs> What we want to do is nothing more than what any landowner wants to do with his property. If our six grandkids come out once a month and spend the weekend, that's essentially what we're talking about. That's the number that we're talking about. Now they want to inflate it. Our opposition wants to inflate it and make it look like we're going to have 50 kids running unsupervised and having an impact on their property. And that's anything but the truth. Um, it's not a camp because it's an experience. An experience at Thriving Oaks is a learning experience. I have been involved in men's ministry and working with kids for 25 years. And so I've seen a thing or two, and I know a thing or two. Um, what's taking place is being bullied by self-serving neighbors that want to have nothing to do with serving others and that's what we're trying to do is call our kids up to take a turn on the trail and to um, uh, to make a difference and to live a life of serving others and not to be self-serving um, we shouldn't even be here requesting a special permit because what we do is nothing more than many landowners do in sharing their property. It's just that we choose to share our property and we're surrounded by those that do not and, and they don't want to have any part of that. Um, our neighbors have come up with uh, 
some ridiculous suppositions, which I will only mention briefly because your zoning board has already determined by a unanimous vote that we meet all the requirements. Um, it's been said that rezoning will take away valuable farmland and violate the 2006-2026 Franklin County Comprehensive Land Use Plan. We're talking 56 acres here, and most of it's wooded. We do have enough prairie grass to produce 15 bales of hay, hardly enough to be considered a valuable commodity in terms of farm use. We will plant 10 acres for food plots uh, for wildlife. And um, so in a way, we are farming, farming for wildlife. We take serious, serious the stewarding of our land. We have a, um, I'm handing you a publication by, put out by Mossy Oak, which is a company that's been in the hunting and fishing and hunting industry for 30 years. And uh, there is a bookmark by one of our brochures at a devotional that I write for this publication on a quarterly basis. Um, all we want to do is share and give kids an opportunity to learn how we, how we speak, how, 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 we, how we teach self-confidence and true identity. We're, just, we're coming off the, the cusp of another school shooting. And what if one of those kids had come through Thriving Oaks and that was the turn in the trail for him? It's not happening in our churches. We, we are connected to the Catholic community and we're connected to the evangelical community. Where it takes place is at home. And that's what we want to do is to replicate how we teach and what we teach uh, to moms and dads all over. It's also been said that our events will be an added burden on the well water supply in the area. To say the least is a, to say that is, is, is a stretch. If a family of eight moved in instead of us, would there be opposition? I doubt it. But that's exactly, uh, that's precisely the number we're talking about. To, our, to say our limited number of kids visiting the property is added burden to the wells in the area is like saying taking a bucket of water out of Pomona Lake is going to cause the water level to drop. It's a moot point. It's also been said that there are already six camps in, in Franklin County serving young, youth, youth and young adults. To compare Thriving Oaks to one of these other camps is like comparing a 6A high school to a mom homeschooling a family of six. Another stretch, to say the least. Another distortion of the truth is that the land to be permitted is not owned by the operator of the youth camp, which we are not a youth camp. My wife and I are the owners of the property, and Thriving Oaks Ministries was founded by me. So another distortion of the truth. Thriving Oaks is a 501c3 nonprofit as authorized by the IRS. And I, can, uh, I have copies of the letter from the IRS if, if you would like that. Um, increase in motor vehicle traffic, safety, tr uh, trash, um, all of those things have been addressed by uh, the um, by your staff and we meet all the requirements noise level has been and will always be at a low level we have neighbors that shoot uh, in rapid fire mode and so the standards have been set pretty high in our neighborhood for noise and we we fall way way under that <coughs> this room is full of those who have known us for a long time some as many as 20 years many from franklin county and yes there are some from kansas city because that's where we lived for 18 years before choosing to move to franklin county they're here in support of our purpose at thriving oaks but more so to support us personally because they know us and they they know the influence that we can have on the kids of franklin county our purpose is to plant seeds for young for our sons and daughters, grandsons and granddaughters, to be set on a path to becoming responsible adults that are not self-seeking, but seek to serve others in Franklin County and the world. The Planning and Zoning Committee voted seven to zero unanimously in favor of issuing us a special use permit. 
They have concluded that Thriving Oaks will have a life-giving impact on the boys and girls of Franklin County. They voted in favor of feeling a need in our kids that helps them learn how to relate personally instead of only through texting and social media. They voted unanimously in favor of a place where kids will hear they have purpose and their life matters. Thriving Oaks will have maximum influence on the boys and girls that experience the teaching at Thriving Oaks while having minimal impact on our neighbors' quality of life. We've loved our neighbors since the day we moved in and that will never change. That's just who we are. We ask you, the children of Franklin County ask you to uphold the vote by your zoning board. Thank you. Any questions? So at this time, I don't. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go to the uh, public comments on this item. I'll just tell you one time so we don't have to go over it each time someone comes up. You'll be allowed five minutes, and only this item can be discussed at this time. Nothing else uh, brought up, just the item that we're on. So we'll go ahead and start with the, by the order that we signed up. Donna Messina. I'm Donna Messina, 824 Kingman Terrace. Our property is uh, north of uh, Cecil's property. We have um, one common fenced area. Um, the thing that we are concerned about is the, the safety of the children. Um, we rent part of our land to a cattle owner and he puts his cattle on our property. Uh, they are in all over, over all of the property. Cecil's fence and our fence is a common fence. It'd be very easy for one of the children to come over. Um, we have, um, we are also um, feeling um, kind of uh, misplaced because Cecil has come on to our county. He's been here two years. Uh, we've lived on our property for 23 years. Uh, Mr. Uh, Nitcher and Mr. Stainbrook have been there for over 100 years. Their families have been there for over 100 years. And uh, while um, Mr. Carter might have good intentions, we think that the uh, existing landowners who have been there for many, many, many years should have at least as much consideration for the use of the land as he does. Thank you. Lee Nitcher. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm Lee Nitcher at uh, 1143 Kingman Road. Uh, we own basically about a half a mile of uh, pasture land right across the road from Cecil Carter. Uh, we've been there for, my grandfather owned it years, years ago. In fact, he was a county commissioner here years ago, Ben Nitcher, and then uh, my dad owned it, Lorenzo Nitcher, and then I own it, and now hopefully my son and daughter down the road will be part of it. So we're talking four generations, uh, farmed all of our life, and we'll probably consider cons still being there, you know, keep farming. Uh, so really I've got a tie to agriculture and uh, which I know, you know, I'm all for the kids. You know, it's not like somebody's putting out that we're don't like kids and all this. It's just that sometimes you have problems when you have more people you have out there, the more problems you're going to have. Uh, also, another thing is the road issue. Uh, I've got pens back here, cattle pens on the neighbors, across the neighbors. And uh, also I put up Richard Stainbrook's hay and I'm back and forth all the time on that road with my stock trailer and uh, hauling hay and the road's awful narrow. Uh, if you meet anybody, you're about gonna have to, somebody's gonna have to back up. In fact, I've got a picture of the road with my pickup on it. You can pass that around. It's 13 foot from the edge of the road to the edge of the road. And 
to meet anybody in the back of the back of them. So it's a little bit of a safety issue. And uh, like Cecil brought up, there is camps around already, which have been approved, but they've been in operation quite a few years. Uh, I don't know how many has been brought up and started in the last couple of years, not very many. Uh, we've got two camps within six miles. We've got Camp Chippewa, and then we've got Timberlakes, which Timberlakes is only like three miles away. So it's not like we don't have a place for the kids to go already. And uh, like I said, uh, I'm more into agricultural, and uh, the more people you get out there, you know, Cecil brought up last time that he picks up trash and stuff on the road when he takes his trash dumpster out to the road at the edge of Labette Road. Well, there's a reason he's got to go out to Labette Road. The dump truck, the trash truck, will not go down that road because it's so narrow. So that's a big issue for me. If I meet somebody on that road, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a problem. Uh, <coughs> that's basically what I have to say right now and appreciate it. Thank you. Lee Slicher, Joe, Joe, sorry. First, I would, my name is Joe Schleicher. I live at 860 Kingman Terrace, Mona. First, I'd like to comment on something that Cecil said. He said that we're all just interested in our own personal little world and don't care about anybody else, basically what he said. Um, he doesn't know all of the people as well as he thinks he does. The Cenas, who live next door to me, have a rather large garden. They have a lot of apple trees in their property. And every year, the excess that is produced by that garden and produced by those trees are given to Hope House. So to say those people are self-centered, and only thinking of themselves is totally off the mark. <coughs> Next, <clears throat> Cecil, I want to make sure I understood you correctly. You are on the board of directors of the Thriving Oaks. I founded it. You founded it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, how many members are on the board? There are five board members. Five board members, but you are, OK. Are you the one who's asking for this permit yes. as an individual yes. to operate the youth missionary? Yes. Okay. My question is, what does the word operate really mean? Does it mean that it's all of the decisions for the camp? Or does it mean he manages the camp from day to day? Or what exactly does operate mean? During the Planning Commission meeting, I raised the objection of how fast or how much he would grow the camp, making it larger. <clears throat> In response to that, someone from his side of the group said Cecil would not, the building of additional cabins is not a decision that Cecil would, be, would make. That decision would be made by the 503C the Thriving Oaks. Okay, if they are making those kind of decisions, is it the 503C that is really operating the camp, or is it Cecil? If it is Cecil himself, okay, that's what the permit asks for. If it is really the 503C that is operating the camp by making decisions of growing or not growing or whatever, then the, then the operating permit should be issued to the 503C, which means all of this would have to go over, be done all over again. Thank you. The next person signed up is Cecil Carter, but he's already spoke, so we're going to go to Gene Hurt. Can I, can I respond to that? No, not, not we'll this call time. you up at the end. Gene Hurt, 219 West 4th Street in Linden, Kansas. 
seems to me that I remember another event took out there, out there about a cross country motorcycle group. And uh, there was a lot of concern about the people in the immediate area of noise and everything else on the motorcycles. But that was approved by you and all them. But here is a situation where I can see the people that just spoke before me, as I know what Cecil and the individuals from Kansas City are here for. But I stress to you this. We do have other camps, Chippewa and the others. They all have to make decisions somehow or other to have a youth camp. Now, he has, Cecil has a point, in my opinion, because he is the landowner. So, you know, here we gotta move forward. Here's a man coming in Franklin County and these people come down from Kansas City because you know, we want to move forward in this county. And we've got to show him and the youth in this county that there are other places for our kids can go to to learn. And I think it's very wise here. You've got a tough decision here now, commissioners, because you're going to hear from both sides. But I think I have to speak for Cecil and those people because we do need that here. We really do. And don't deny this man his right where he lives and try to do something right. I feel that's there because they've come down here. Thank you. Jerry Brockhouse. Jerry Brockhouse, uh, 9535 West 116th Place, Overland Park, Kansas. I've known uh, Cecil a long time. I know his integrity. I know what his heart for kids, and, uh, and as he tried to say, and the neighbors don't like it, it's really not a camp. It's one-on-one -on -one with adults. His, his idea is to have to where dads or moms can be with their kids, and it's just it's a very, very low-key uh, it's not intended to be a production. It's not intended to be, quote, a youth camp where kids are going to be coming for weeks or months or whatever the, you know, the, the camps are set up to do. And so I just would implore you to look at the facts and not the suppositions. And if anything, if the road is an issue, uh, let's widen the road if that's your, if that's your deal. But, but anyway, I do... Uh, I ask that you you all think about the 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 fact that the land use. I grew up on a farm. We we would hunt, we'd fish, we would do all those kinds of things that you can do on your own land. And so I'm not understanding why the neighbors don't feel like he has the right to do on his land what he wants to do. So anyway. Henry Bucard. Henry Bucard, 10816 West, 123rd Street in Overland Park, Kansas. This is my first experience listening to people, most of which are not youth. Uh, but I'm here to support Cecil Carter in his endeavor. I've known Cecil to be a Christian brother. I am the owner of a business myself, but I'm also an ordained Christian minister. And I want to support, I want to ask you, panel, uh, to support that work. I just came back yesterday from a trip where I ministered to 250 youth in the Caribbean. We have a great need in our country to afford this youth the opportunity to meet a couple like the Carters, to share their experience with them, and to encourage them in this very ever increasing more difficult life for the young people that we have in our country. So I am encouraged that you are not just a panel of one, but that there are five of you. Some of you have a hoary head, meaning white hair, meaning that you have some wisdom between the five of you. And I'm hoping that that wisdom will inure to the benefit of the Carter couple who are doing 
a very worthwhile work on their own property in the United States of America. Thank you for your consideration. Michael Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission. Michael Bailey, 14721 Robinson, Overland Park, Kansas. You can probably tell by my accent that I don't hail from this country. I came from Britain 26 years ago, and I saw many, many differences. I didn't understand America. I was brought up in London, major city. Over 8 million people live there, very, very crowded. I didn't know where milk came from. I didn't know many of the things I didn't understand. How did I learn as a child? Through some not very good ways. The opportunity that Cecil and his wife are offering children, yes, of Franklin County, but also those who haven't had the opportunity of seeing and understanding, and this is the great thing, it's the understanding of really what an amazing country America is. By all rights, it should never work. It's a huge melting pot of so many different cultures and races and backgrounds and understandings. But in the main, it does work. And it works because of people like Cecil and his wife who want to give back for all the things that they've learned. And yes, I'm a Christian, but not for very long. I knew what it was like not to be a Christian. And the opportunity that he is offering a very small number of kids at a time to learn what it's like and how to be a responsible human being, learning how to be and grow into a responsible and caring adult. I think is something that this commission could make the decision in favor of. I thank you for your time. Randall Lipson. <laughs> Chairman, commissioners, Randall Lipson, 1375 Rock Creek Road. I'm the director of Timberlakes uh, <coughs> Camp and Retreat Center, the old Girl Scout camp, uh, all the ladies my age remember going there. Um, I'm only here, I, I support Cecil, um, friend, man of God, um, just loves ministering the word to people and uh, adults and children alike. Comparison of Timber Lakes to uh, his is not even a comparison. We're, 300 beds, you know, Chippewa, uh, Prairie Star, and us would be similar. Um, we don't do one-on-one. -on -one and, and matter of fact, Timberlakes is even different than that because we're just a rental facility. We just, churches come and we create an environment for churches to come. They bring their own programming. We don't do any programming where I think Chippewa and Prairie Star does. So the comparison... Um, I wish we could do more one-on-one -on -one because that's, as we've heard from some of the other people, that's where what the youth need. They need to know they're accepted. They no, need to know they're loved so they can give that away. Um, the groups that come to Timber Lakes do that, but in a larger scale. So the one-on-one the -on -one is needed, and it is very different than what we do at Timberlakes. Thank you. Alex Bursum. My name is Alex Ursum. Um, uh, 5611 West 98th Street, Overland Park, Kansas. But, you know, I also, my address is also Rural Route 1, Box 45, um, Burn, Kansas, up in Nemaha County, where, you know, I grew up on a farm, and my, my dad and mom um, had some pretty good acreage. We still have about 500 acres up there, and 
we rented out. And I just, I just really grew up in a really rural area. The closest town was 220 people. And so I'm not there anymore, but my heart will always be in rural America just because it was where I grew up. And, um, and I, I guess I just want to say I'd be proud to have a, 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 a camp like this next to our farm when I grew up. It would have been an opportunity maybe for me to get exposed to something else other than what I got exposed to with my mom and dad because they knew what they knew. But, boy, I've heard a lot more things. I've learned a lot more things than what they taught me in the 40-something years since I was up in that rural area. And so I just wanted to say that I really, do, I really know Cecil pretty well. I've had a chance to really talk to him about some real personal things, and, and, and he is... I don't see the possibility that he could be anything but a good neighbor. I just do not see that Cecil Carter has the possibility in him to be anything but a good neighbor. So I just think that Franklin County should be proud of having a man like him live here. And um, the experience he brings as a man, as a businessman, and as a man who truly cares about people in an authentic way is not just a resource to Franklin County, but could be a resource to the children here. And our children are truly uh, it's an investment in the future, and um, I'm actually in a second career as a therapist, believe it or not, and as I help kids to get sometimes what their own parents can't give them, I really tell you there is a real need here, but I think you all kind of sort of know that already. Thank you. That's the last. Okay. Normally the way this works is uh, if the commission has any questions for the applicant after the, this process, we'd ask him to come back up. Does anyone have any questions they would like to ask? I'd like Cecil to come back up and just kind of recap. You, you said you wanted to respond. Well, in, in, uh, in response to uh, Mr. Nitcher's comment about the trash truck, that was my choice. Uh, the trash. Tr I'm the only one on the road that that has Ottawa trash pickup, and so uh, um, I didn't like the heavy truck coming down the road, and and so I just I called the I called the sanitation company and said, Hey, can you pick it up up there at the pavement and just turn around there? And they said, Sure. So that was a choice I made. It seems like most of the concerns sit around the intensity or potential intensity of the use. Can you give us a little more of a idea, like how often events would be held and how big they are? What do you mean by intensity? Uh, the intensity of the land use. People talk about traffic and noise. Can it get bigger? Things like this. I mean, do you, no. do you intend for it to you, get bigger? Like, to, what are your plans? To do what to to teach how we teach, it can't it can't be done. It can't be done. Six kids at the most. And our preferred is four. And the age, our preferred age, is nine to 11. And so because that's right before they go into middle school when they start flexing. And they start hearing from teachers. They start hearing from their peers. And culture begins to influence them. And so what we want to do is plant seeds that sets them on a path to knowing who they are and, and to be able to stand in the face of the bullies in culture. And so um, our numbers will co come when we have someone from out of state call and say, hey, we want to send our kids there. Sorry, we work with local kids, but we will help teach you how to do this very same thing in your county. And so that's where the numbers will come from. The way we teach is very intentional and very unique and it is just uh and i'm amazed that it hadn't been done before but it hasn't have you done it before in a different location no I've, I, what we do is we teach around the making of an arrow and so the arrow becomes a metaphor of their life as designed by god and so um, i've taught around the components of an arrow but it wasn't until we moved to Franklin County, and it was revealed to me that we need to make arrows. A, a child needs something to remind them of who God created them to be and not who the bullies in culture says they are. So we have no, I mean, and, and I think it was Joe that mentioned cabins. We don't have any cabins. We've got one bunk room with four, four beds in it, 
So, so you're, is, it, is it in your first residence? Mm -hmm. It's in our on our low, uh, lower level. We have a, a, a finished out basement. It's there. How long have you been doing this? Yeah. Well, we moved here in 2016, and we've we've kind of been scrimmaging. We've done some different groups by invitation, learning who who we're we're going to become and. And, and we now know that, but I mean, I've been doing ministry like this for 25 years, but doing it here in Franklin County since 2016. So you say Thriving Oak, so is that new? Is it, is it relatively new what, or else, what else have you done with Thriving Oaks? Thriving Oaks was established in 2016. And so that's, that's when we start, started. So yeah, it is. With what intent at that point that you with, did? With what? With what intent at that point did you make? So you set up Thriving Oaks for what? Well, we. What was the purpose? We 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 set it up first uh, first of all to minister to boys, to help them learn how to um, to be uh, masculine in a healthy way, to teach them different skills that help them grow confidence and do things that men do and set them on to becoming. The man that God created them to be. When the arrow teaching came about, we realized that the principles apply to young ladies too. So, so we do girls now. So, and we'll have we'll have women that will um, will do the facilitating in that. And uh, back to Joe's question about whether it's Thriving Oaks, whether it's us, the buck stops here. And so I am the landowner. I founded the ministry, so the buck stops here. Of course, the nonprofit organization is a legal mechanism for you to file taxes, raise money, and the structure, but you're the property owner. And right. Ultimately, yeah. The rights lie with you whether or not to build a structure. Or right. Yeah. Along with me, our board governs the, makes the, we make the decisions for the ministry. It has nothing to do with the property. That sense. Thank you. Well, you've heard the uh, testimony this morning, and you have the recommendation from staff as well as the uh, planning commission. But basically, you have three alternatives available this morning. You can take the uh, recommendation of the planning commission and approve the special use permit subject to the conditions that are set forth in that draft resolution, or if there are other issues you feel are not resolved at this time, you could refer it back to the Planning Commission with specific direction to address those concerns. And the uh, last alternative would be to deny it based on certain findings of fact that uh, this would not be consistent with the uh, other provisions of our zoning regulations, our comprehensive plan, and so on. One of the things that I would add is when Larry and I make a recommendation to the board based on the comprehensive plan, whether or not the special <coughs> use permit ultimately complies with the comprehensive plan. Value judgments, we don't make morality judgments. And the reason we don't do that is because comprehensive plan remains the same. It remains consistent. Staff changes, commissioners change. When you start making value judgments, the consistency goes out the window. By sticking with the, the comprehensive plan, it gives us more credibility. It gives us a backbone to, to step back and say, we're basing this off of what is allowed and what isn't allowed legally in Franklin County. I said this to always encourage you to make decisions based upon a comprehensive plan. To give you an analogy, we have a personnel manual at the county that serves as the backbone for everything that we do. So when we make decisions, we reference that manual. We don't go with a gut feeling, and it's because we need our other employees to see, well, that manual, they're gonna follow it. We know what we're getting out of them. In much the same way, 
I think it would be helpful for the public to look at this board and be able to say, you know, they are going to follow their comprehensive plan. It helps them know what they are getting out of you. So I would keep that in mind as you make your vote today. Any questions? Uh, it, you know, I, I sat through that hearing. That's probably why I won't explain why I haven't asked a lot of questions because I sat on the front row during that hearing that night. So uh, I heard the same guys, things you guys asked. That's the planning board did the same thing, only maybe 30 or 40 more questions. Uh, they, they did it from a professional standpoint when they did it. And uh, I know I served on that board for four years, so it's just like uh, – our council says, and Larry says, uh, their decision is out of their comprehensive plan. Now, they ask a lot of questions to help them make that decision, but, uh, you know, so I, th I think the planning board did a very thorough questioning. I want to address one statement, um, Lee's statement. I went out last night to look at this property. I drove my car, actually. Um, and went out and no one was there, drove out, drove up on, looked at the property. I agree with your roads in the rough shape that stretched down there. Um, the rains didn't do those ditches any favor either. And uh, as many of our roads are in that shape. So that road is, is gonna take some work on this summer as several of our roads. And hopefully when we get some dry weather, they're able to get out as, as numerous other roads and work on the ditches and get the rock back on like it should be. Um, it washed out pretty good right in, in that stretch. I agree with you that that, that road's going to take some work, but um, so does most of our other roads right now after all these rains. So hopefully when it dries out, uh, the county will get out there and do some work on that road and get the rock back on and, and get the ditches a, a little better shape than they are now. So just wanted to address that because I, I see where you're coming from on the road, and, uh, and it is pretty rough right now there. Yeah, but I would think that if somebody put... 30 cattle on a piece of land on there that there would be as much traffic or more to check on those cows daily um, than this facility. Or if a family of eight with six teenagers, there would be lots of traffic. There you go. Okay, any more questions for Larry? Thank you, Larry. Just nothing else. Anybody else have anything? If not, I would look for a motion on the special use permit application 1903-1654 to permit the operation of a youth missionary camp. I would make that motion. To approve? Yeah. Go ahead and make the motion to approve. I make a motion to approve the special use permit application 1903-1654 to permit the operation of a youth ministry camp on an existing farmstead in an A1 agriculture zoning district based on the findings and subject to the five conditions cited in the attached resolution. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Commissioner Waymire? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? I'm going to vote no. And the reason I'm going to vote no is uh, we've had zoning in this county for over 20 years. Uh, everybody likes that do whatever they want on their land. It's kind of an unalienable right uh, to uh, do whatever you want on your land, but uh, you can start a rock quarry or anything else like that if, if, you, if we didn't have zoning. And we have zoning, and I think I've been consistent since I've been on this commission that uh, every enterprise that's come up, uh, the horse ranch or the horse youth ranch down around Tool, motocross, deal I voted no on it because uh, I think there needs to be a precedent they just can't come to this county and start an operation uh, without a permit and that's why I'm voting no on it Mr. Stottlemyre yes Chair Howard yes As I indicated earlier, uh, it does take a supermajority. You have a supermajority, so the special use permit is approved. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, it takes us to item number two, <coughs> consider approval of rezoning application 1903-1651 to rezone approximately 12 acres from an A1 agriculture zoning district to an RE residential estate zoning district. At their uh, meeting in, in April of this year, the uh, Planning Commission also approved this uh, request to rezone approximately 12 acres from an A1 to the RE residential state zone. The purpose for that rezoning was to. Just a minute. Give me a second to. You want to reset? Leave. No, they'll, they'll be going in a second. The purpose for the uh, rezoning was to allow for the uh, construction of an accessory structure at this time with a new residence uh, possibly in the future. We have reviewed that uh, in accordance with the provisions of our zoning regulation as well as the comprehensive plan. The Planning Commission found that it did satisfy that criteria. Uh, there is a pending uh, lot split that I can approve subject to the approval of the rezoning. Again, uh, the Planning Commission has submitted uh, a recommendation to the County Commissioners for the approval of the rezoning and to uh, amend the county's official zoning map accordingly. Do you have any questions for Larry on this? The more normal ones that we have? <laughs> Nobody wants to speak? <laughs> if not, we'll look for a motion to approve rezoning application 1903-1651 to rezone approximately 12 acres from an A1 to a R3 residential. Motion to approve. Motion to a second. Second. Motion to a second. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay, item number three. Well, Larry, you're up there all day today. <laughs> so the approval of rezoning application 1903-1653 to rezone approximately 5.11 acres from an A1 to a RE residential. As you've indicated, this is a request to, again, rezone from the agricultural zone to the uh, uh, RE residential state zone, and then we will have to re rezone the remainder because it no longer satisfies the minimum acreage for the A1 zoning district, even though it will be retained in an agricultural uh, zone it uh, no longer satisfies the A1, but the A2 zoning uh, would more appropriately fit the size of the parcel. Again, uh, we did give a <clears throat> notice, uh, I think it was the seven surrounding property owners. Uh, this is a, a simple, pretty straightforward to where they're wanting to divide out a parcel for a, a relative to build a new home with a the capability of building their own home on the larger acreage at a later date. The Planning Commission has forwarded a recommendation to you to approve this uh, rezoning request based on uh, the findings and subject to the uh, provisions that are set forth in the draft uh, resolution that has been presented to you. We Again, I have nothing further to add unless you have any questions. Can we do these all on one motion? Both, both of them. Zone. I have no questions. Anybody else? Okay, if not, we'll look for a motion to approve rezoning application 1903-1653 to rezone approximately 5.11 acres from an A1 zoning district to an RE residential and to rezone approximately 36.30 acres from an A1 agricultural zoning district 
to an A2 transitional agriculture zoning district. I make a motion to approve rezoning application 1903-1653 and to amend the official county zoning map accordingly. Second. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yeah. Commissioner Waymire? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Consider approval of rezoning application 1903-1658 to rezone approximately 2.312 acres from an A2 transitional agriculture district to an R1 single family residential zoning district. Mr. Chairman, this uh, is somewhat a unique uh, situation. We have a parcel that's uh, contiguous on two sides to the uh, city of Ottawa. They have not annexed it. I think most of you are familiar with it. It's the southeast corner of the intersection of 7th Street and, and Eisenhower. The big white barn that sits there is the, the primary uh, parcel that will be retained in the larger tract, the house, and some additional acreage that uh, lies south of that house will be uh, rezoned, if approved, to the uh, R1 single family uh, zoning district. This is being zoned to the R1 because in this situation, public water and public sewer both are being provided by the city to the, serve the existing residents. And we would anticipate that at some time in the near future, this will be annexed to the, to the city. So it does satisfy our comprehensive plan. It does satisfy the provisions of our zoning regulations and the planning commission has recommended that you approve this uh, rezoning request. The larger track still satisfies the minimum acreage for the A2 zone, and it will be retained in the agricultural zoning district at this time. You said the barn's gonna be on the bigger one, the bigger? Yes. I believe that there is a, a draft of the uh, uh, lot split that's provided as part of your staff report. You'll see a track one, and then you'll see a track two. The majority of that track two, by the way, is in the floodplain. And therefore, all the more reason to keep it into a, an agricultural zoning district. Any questions on this one? If not, we we'll look at a motion to approve rezoning application 1903-1658, rezone approximately two 0.312 acres from an A2 transitional to an R1 residential family zoning district. The motion to approve. I have a motion. Is there a second? A second. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Waitmire? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Thank you, Commissioners. They're all signed there. Are you done now? <laughs> no, he's still got staff reports. He may be back. <laughs> Done for a while. Okay. Okay. Takes us to item number five. Consider for approval awarding tire bid number one, two, and three to GCR Tires. David. Excuse me, commissioners. Um, we sub, uh, sent off to get uh, uh, bids for tires. Uh, very similar to what we did a few months ago. Um, we needed to restock our, our tire supply. Uh, we received two bids, uh, two different vendors um, responded to our bid request. And uh, the, you know, the, the low bid for all three uh, sets of tires was uh, GCR tires. I believe they were successful on uh, the last go around as well. Uh, the, the total price, let me get to that page, uh, GCR tires, their total bid package was $25,133.67. Uh, Pomps Tire Cross Midwest uh, came in just above that at $26,328.10. So uh, comparable prices, um, and we would recommend going with GCR tires in the amount of $25,133.67. Questions? 
Okay, if not, I would look for a motion to approve awarding tire bid number one, two, and three to GCR Tires in the amount of $25,133.67. Motion to approve. Motions are a second. Second. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay, item number six, consider awarding the 2019 SALT bid to Central SALT in the LLC in the amount of $111,384. David. Commissioners, uh, for many years now, we have worked with uh, Douglas County and, and uh, a total of seven other entities uh, to work together to submit a SALT bid. Um, and so Douglas County kind of organizes that and, and uh, solicits the bids and gets those back and tabulates them for us. Uh, they ask us each year how much salt that we need uh, this year because of the winter that we've had. Uh, we essentially use two-thirds of our supply, uh, and so we're trying to restock um, to be prepared for this upcoming winter. Um, Central Salt has since 2015 has been the low bid. Uh, their bid this year is 37 cents a ton, uh, more than it was last year. And so we, we feel that we need approximately 2,100 tons. We won't order that all in one shot, uh, but that's our estimate. Uh, and so we believe that, um, that we'll ultimately need the $111,000 worth of salt. Are we, uh, does the, the smaller cities in the county, are they still able to buy salt through us at yes. our cost? Yeah, we, we sold salt to several of the communities, city of Ottawa, uh, and I think there might have even been an outside uh, a community from outside our area that requested, they, you know, they ran out and, and no way of getting it on short, you know, quick turnaround, and we were able to supply them with uh, material. We just charged them the, the same that that we pay for it. So it's a path pass through expense. We don't mark it up or anything else trying to uh, make sure that folks are covered. Right. And so how much do you usually stockpile at a time? Well, our, our uh, salt shed holds, uh, I think around 32 tons or 3,200 tons. And so we used um, two thirds of it this year. I know you're new, but do you have any idea what, on a normal, Half on, on the average, Half. how many they use? Half. Yeah. Okay. If no more questions, we'd look for a motion to approve awarding the 2019 SALT bid to Central SALT in the amount of $111,384. Motion to approve. No motions or second? Second. Motion to second, Janet. Commissioner Dunn? Yep. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yeah. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay. Do you Take think we could ask Mother Nature to, you know, maybe be a little bit more gentle next year? <laughs> that would be really awesome. I uh, can we do that? <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not going to go there. You don't mess with Mother Nature. <laughs> <laughs> Takes us to staff reports. Derek. Obviously, something any changes would come before you and, and the 
probably come before you in several study sessions. I mean, this is a, this is a big project and it's a complicated project, but it's something that it's, it's important to get right because our benefits as well as our salaries are still under a tax lid. And when they're under that lid, we can't, I mean, we've got our budget built in a way that for the foreseeable future, we should be able to absorb these increases, but eventually that runs out. So we're, we are exploring that. Um, some of the projects we've got going on, apparently Kilo is pretty severely understaffed at the moment. So they haven't given us a timeline on the inlets here in the Annex parking lot. But they are gonna try to get out either Friday or Monday and put asphalt around those inlets so that we can remove the cones and not have to worry about any vehicles being us that obviously we are one of their priorities, but they've only got so many staff. Uh, we've been in contact with the individual who is giving us an estimate on repairing our clock towers. He is currently having trouble finding parts, and so he's still um, in the process of looking for those. Brandon and his staff have also been repairing sidewalks. That's something we're trying to starting around the detention center and the district core, and then we're going to continue to work out from there. So, him and his staff have been working very hard. That's all I have for today. Anything else, Larry? Sheriff? Good morning. Um, the update on our uh, detox cells is that the ceilings and the cameras are all complete and uh, we are on the waiting list now with the company to do the walls and, and the floor we're looking at hopefully three months but it could be a little bit longer they are uh, again they're the they're out of Florida and they travel around the country doing it so um, it, but we are in we are in their uh, in their schedule at, the, at this point um, also I believe I don't know if um, if it'll be mentioned, but with the hot water heater situation in there was was taken care of, and they got that done in a, a timely manner. We appreciate uh, the help from the maintenance department getting all that done and coordinating that. It was very much appreciated. Um, KLETC is where we send our um, people to the uh, to the law enforcement academy to become state certified. Um, the classes for this entire year are filled up and. Um, so we've they they understand that they that they have a uh, a crunch going on on their end. I've I've talked with them several times the past couple of weeks. There's always been there's always a possibility of us being able to send people up to Johnson County to that academy, but we need to get approval for that. So I was working through that process. Um, but KLETC is going to be doing some restructuring, and currently they run two classes at a time, um, beginning in I believe it's July. Uh, they've, they are going to change that. They're going to start running five classes at a time. Um, the class sizes will be a little smaller from what they tell me, but it's going to get a lot more people through. Um, so that should speed things up for us, for our staff, instead of having to wait so long um, for the academy. Typically, when we get someone hired, we put them to work. They're learning the jail. They work in the jail till we get them an academy date where they can go and get certified, and then we send them out to the, to the road after, after that. And we've had people in there as much as six months um, or or longer, and hopefully with what KLETC is doing, that will fix that, and we and so we should be able to to uh, to see the results of that here pretty soon. So that that's a positive thing for us. So um, where I'm holding off till July to for my official request to send somebody up the road because typically it will get denied if they don't fix their problem on their end. Then I've got a good shot at getting that getting that approved. Um, There's no option of getting into Douglas County. I know they have their own. No. Um, what it takes is I have to have approval from, because the statute says we have to send them to KLETC, um, and they, but the director can waive that. So what happens is I have to get approval from the KLETC director and then approval from the whichever academy it would go to, um, and it's, it's a funding issue. Uh, for them 
Johnson yeah. County used to send their jailers to KLETC out of they, they still send some people there, but Johnson County has their own academy now as well. The thing that is uh, unique about the Douglas County and the uh, Johnson County is that they don't just cover your case law and how to do things, but they also cover a lot of their procedure and, and how that works. And so um, that's why those, are, those academies are so unique. Um, and then the 22nd of this month, it's a uh, Wednesday, we are going to be starting our Citizens Academy. And uh, that will run for six consecutive Wednesday evenings from 6.30 to 9.30. And we'll be hosting that in our office. Um, most of the time, a, a couple of weeks, they will be in other locations. Um, it's a real simple application process that we have. Um, and so that we know that we don't have people that are wanted felons or anything like that that are, they're going through and uh, so we're looking forward to that that and that citizens academy is being funded um, completely by the uh, sheriff's foundation and so with some donations that they, <coughs> they've received and some fundraising efforts that they've had um, that's one of the things that they're going to be able to fund and that will be the first one will be starting the 22nd of this month so if you have any questions for me Happy to answer. Jeff, did you have any hail damage on any of the cars? Any um, I've not heard of any damage on any of our vehicles. We had some damage around the county um, the other the other night, but we didn't have. Uh, I, I was not made aware of anything, any of our equipment that was damaged from that. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, as you know, we had another storm event um, Monday night into Tuesday. Uh, seems like every week that's what I get to talk about. Uh, in addition to the torrential rainfall and the flooding that we experienced, uh, this storm event uh, added high winds and hail. Um, so we had uh, nine of our staff members work uh, almost all night long. Uh, many of them were out till three o'clock or so, um, and then back in uh, early the next morning to, to hit it again. Uh, we had downed uh, power poles uh, in, a, in several different areas. Uh, some of those were snapped due to the wind. Others were trees and limbs falling on them, knocking them down. So uh, uh, our staff worked with uh, emergency management, sheriff's department, and the various power companies to provide uh, traffic control. Uh, in some instances, we waited on site uh, until uh, representatives of the power company were able to arrive and, and kill the power uh, to those lines. Um, and, and so with all the downed trees around the county, uh, we had several of the blade operators that were in their blades uh, through, through the night uh, trying to get tree limbs out of the road. Um, uh, and then we spent um, basically all of yesterday doing the same thing, uh, removing trees uh, from our roadways, making sure that uh, there was at least a passable lane on all the roads. Uh, we still have some low water crossings that it's simply, you know, those are, are rolling too fast. So those areas uh, are obviously st still underwater and not passable. Some of them are, I drove across uh, one or two yesterday that not great, but you could get through. So uh, right now, all the roads are open as far as I know. Uh, the power company have, has gotten those, uh, those areas along uh, uh, Finney in Tennessee, Hamilton in Texas, and Haskell Road just east of 59. All those are back open, uh, and I think the power has been restored, although I don't know that for sure. But the poles are up, the roads are clear. Um, so what we're doing today is uh, still taking care of storm damage. Uh, we've got some road issues that we're trying to address. Um, uh, our roads have really gone downhill over these last few storms. Uh, we were making some progress before the rain started. Uh, we have lost a lot of that. Um, and in some cases, they're worse than they, they were uh, before. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. It's going to take quite a long spell of dry weather and um, um, long hours and hard work to um, get these things repaired. But we are, we are working on it and then um, got more storms supposed to be coming in tonight so we'll have folks on standby 
uh, ready to go to work if um, if we have similar issues to Monday night. Jet. Back from my conference, that was a really great opportunity to meet with other clerks across the state and um, learn from them. Um, we're finishing our final revisions on um, budgets with each of the department heads and Tammy and I are going to be working together to get um, your budget books and then we'll um, get some dates set for your study session where we review the budget with you guys um, and the department heads also. So we're going to be getting that on the calendar soon. Um, out in Commissioner Stottlemyre's district, we do have the Wellsville special question election moving forward. That's happening the first week of June. So um, we're working really hard on that, getting it all set up for them. So, hey, Don, you want to start with commissioner comments or board reports? Start on it, and Roy and I've been to a lot of the same thing. I'll just fill in. Well, you want me to start? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pass it to you. Yeah, Don, and I was at the Kansas City uh, County Commission Conference in Junction City last week. Uh, every time I go to this conference, I actually learn something. And the same subjects come up every time, too. Uh, one of the main things that uh, we all enjoyed was uh, Dr. Roger McAllen, a professor of agriculture law, gave a presentation, and he talked about uh, fence law. And you always learn something when, when you talk about fences and fence viewing and what's a fence and, and all that. And uh, anyway, I learned that uh, when you do a fence building, you don't, you don't go out there and tell the tell the parties where the fence goes. You just your responsibility as a commissioner is to go out and look at the fence and decide whether it's an adequate fence or not. Uh, another thing I learned that uh, the state has a three wire minimum to be an adequate fence, but I talked to the Anderson County and and individual counties can and set a higher standard if they want. Anderson County has a five wire uh, minimum to make a fence and I don't know that's something we ought to consider sometime is maybe, maybe, maybe go to five wire because I don't know if anybody makes a three wire fence anymore. So anyway, uh, ag law is always very interesting, complicated and we enjoy that. Then we had a, another speaker talk about uh, appraisals. Uh, it's really a shorthand uh, of appraisers in the state. Uh, they're kind of a hot commodity. Uh, it's really hard to have a uh, real uh, good appraiser. We're lucky we uh, have a good appraiser here. And uh, a lot of a lot of uh, counties have problem with commercial appraisals, and a lot of them have to go to consultants to do the appraisals and. Um, get a get an accurate appraisal and can pretty near always account uh, count on having a, an appeal from a commercial outfit about your appraisals and you have to deal with that. So anyway, those are two of, two of the highlights. And one of the big things for the county commissioners is uh, a push to uh, have counties be a constitutional uh, home rule. Initiative going on right now, and right now we have statutory statutory home rule, and there's a push to go to constitutional home rule like like the cities have, and uh, to do a constitutional amendment, you got to have uh, two thirds of the Senate and the House to approve uh, to get it on the ballot, and anyway, they're working on uh, 2020 election for the uh, go to the uh, the people to see if that's a possibility it doesn't apply to the uh, uh, sale or the property tax lid because the cities have to abide by that too so anyway there's opposition from the can uh, Kansas Farm Bureau and the Kansas Livestock Association because they're concerned about um, having more and more regulations for agricultural use out there in the county, basically. We did have a real enjoyable uh, outing. We went to a, a new uh, 
a shooting range uh, there in Junction City. An entrepreneur started a shooting range and provide tactical uh, clothing for first responders or uh, you know sheriffs and police departments. And uh, we had the opportunity to, to uh, fire any kind of weapon you wanted to in the shooting range, which is kind of a neat, neat thing when you go to these conferences. You don't think you're going to go to a shooting range and be shooting guns. But anyway, we did that. It was, it was enjoyable. Um, I think uh, I'll let Don talk about anything else when it's his turn to talk. Uh, I'll just keep on going because I went to the Lake Region uh, RCD meeting yesterday and we had a person named Don T Teske who was from the National Board of Directors or Farmers Veteran Coalition. And this organization is uh, an organization to try to support farmers that are first-time farmers or, or people in, in farming that uh, uh, might need a little help with a, some sort of project. And they have grants up to $5,000 uh, for beginning farmers, like if they want to start a truck farming operation or uh, something like that, they, they, they can get help from this, this uh, coalition. Um, uh, Don gave a good report about their bike program, all the bikes that go out to Ellsworth uh, over the years. Uh, he's taken out 8,000 bikes and brought back about 4,000 bikes uh, to be distributed in the uh, Lake Region area. So it's a, a really successful program, and not only does it help the uh, you know, inmates there at Ellswood have something to do to repair and, and fix these bikes, but also it, it, you know, brings back bikes to the community so they can be distributed to people that, you know, want to use these bikes. That's an excellent program. And also Don talked about uh, feeding the hungry with uh, uh, the deer uh, harvest. And this year it had over 3,200 pounds uh, from Feed the Hunter program to distribute to various organizations to distribute to people that uh, uh, need some uh, venison, I guess. And also to, uh, talked about Heather Morgan. She was out there at her conference in, uh, in uh, Junction City talking about Project uh, 17. And Don mentioned that at her RCD meeting that. Uh, Heather does a good job of, of uh, writing grants for uh, rural development uh, uh, projects. She's, she's worked with uh, rural grocery stores trying to keep them viable uh, and other rural projects that uh, might come up. And she's a good source for uh, any kind of rural development uh, projects. Good. Heather Morgan is a really good speaker and a uh, good person to keep in contact with. And Don, you can fill in the, the blanks. <laughs> well, try now or you want to wait? Whatever you guys want me to do. Go wait. for it. Uh, Roy hit all that pretty good by out there. It was, it was discussed. Uh, I think this deal about the... Uh, constitutional home rule we need to do our homework uh, because at KEC meeting in November one of us up here is going to have to vote whether we support it or not and so this board I don't think it needs to be one person's decision I think the group needs to have a good education on the ins and outs and the do's and don'ts of this because they say it's going to be it uh, council for uh, KEC said it'd probably be one of the biggest changes ever and the way counties do business, uh, one you know, if it goes through and passes, so I think you need to educate yourself better on that. Um, the only other thing I might mention, the Department of Revenue, when they discussed, one of the things they said, there's a couple bills out there, or discussions, about uh, raising the tax lid on some department. One of them was Sheriff's Department. One of them was Health Insurance. One of them was the ambulance department. Uh, and uh, 
there's been discussion uh, on those topics of uh, in in the committees. There's not a bill there yet, but that's been a heavy talk. Uh, if there would be a change in the tax lit, it'd be for those certain areas that uh, that would be allowed to to raise that. Not given any numbers. Uh, but anyhow, I had a lot of comments from people out there that, uh, and I've been well since I've been to one, and that uh, they, the, the county out there did a really good job. Of, of course, the county owns, uh, they don't own the motel part, but they own the conference center that is tied on. It was the Project County and, and Marriott Hotels did, and it worked really well. I know we was allowed to use it for like $400 a day. The cheapest other one they found was $2,500 a day. So that was a definite savings to the County Commissioner Association. Um, I won't go any more on, on the RC and EMA. Roy did a pretty good job. Just that we are talking with the National Board of, of the Veterans Coalition and, and uh, working with the State Board. And the main reason why I started this, I found out the two biggest sponsors of this nationally are Farm Bureau and Kubota Tractor, and who's putting a new big facility right up the road from Franklin County, but Kubota Tractor. And so they put me in touch with the, the gentleman that sits on the national board from uh, Kubota, and so I'll be doing some further discussion with him of what we're trying to do here in not only Franklin County, but the six counties the RCND represents. Um, I attended yesterday. I think I was third in line. I went to the retreat, the chamber retreat. Uh, Ian was definitely busy yesterday with storm damage, and Roy was on his way to Topeka, and Roy informed him that I was still in town. So, so I got a call, and so I ran home, changed, make look a little better and presentable, and I went to it. And it was pretty interesting. Five hours long, held at the bottle house. <clears throat> a gentleman that's a retired uh, uh, director for uh, from Manhattan for their Chamber of Commerce and uh, give the presentation and put it on and all the discussion. Two biggest topics, mainly, maybe three, uh, was Legacy Park, uh, what, what's next once it's completed, who's running it, who's taking care of it, who's managing it. So he convinced uh, everybody was there that they need to be a from onward Ottawa and Chamber and City and two or three other organizations with the city that uh, you'll probably be getting something. They're going to set up a meeting at least for one person from each one of those organizations to talk over because it won't be soon if they open to be open by August. That uh, uh, the biggest thing will be September with the car show. Just who's going to be in charge and who's going to set up programs and activities and, and it's something I guess it happened so quick that people didn't think about that end of it yet, you know. So didn't figure it'd come around that quick to need to do it that quick, I guess. Uh, uh, the other was Proximity Park and it was just a lot of discussion, nothing nothing we don't already know and and uh, the gentleman just kind of gave uh, ideas of Manhattan and, and uh, how they proceed with things like that and doing and he thought it sounded like the city and the county was uh, doing it right and uh, uh, everything looked like they, they uh, John took him a tour of all the different projects and stuff going on you know in the county and city and and the guy uh, seemed to be pretty uh, impressed with the, what the city and county is doing um, one other thing I know the only thing I didn't bring this up but it was brought up down there. Uh, I brought it up a couple times and I've not decided not to bring it up anymore. But uh, I know it was discussed how the city and county, you know, could more talk, more language. And I don't mean just Ottawa. They met the whole county as a whole. Uh, all the little cities and, and anything. But uh, uh, kind of like they had yesterday, uh, it was a good informational deal, but it's kind of, the only thing outside of the city of Ottawa was myself as the county representative. Everything else was city one way or another, you know. And, uh, I, and they mentioned that when we used to have our county summits, how that was something that involved everybody in the county in one room to discuss issues that were going on and what was happening 
throughout the community and all the counties. And I just said that I would bring it up again at the board that maybe the board wants to discuss at one time or another, if that's something they want to uh, look into maybe doing again at some time or another. Uh, but it, it was, I think there was a lot of thoughts brought out that people don't normally say in this meeting. And I thought it really went well. And there's a lot of good information that uh, I didn't know. Of course, I, I don't regularly attend. It means I end the chamber deal. So I don't hear all those facts and figures. So that's all I got. I'll go in. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, you're done. I forgot. Yeah, I would give this morning. I need to announce you guys. Uh, uh, it was sent out to everybody. There will be the uh, Lake Region Solid Waste Authority annual meeting. Will be held in Anderson Garnett. It'll be at the Dutch Country Cafe, 10 a.m. in the morning on Thursday, May the 16th. Uh, you need to let Tammy know so she can, uh, uh, if you plan on going to it. Just to reserve, I'm sure they'll have plenty of food being down there, but I think they want to kind of have a number on uh, how many people would be attending. And this the invitation went out to all the county commissioners and in all the six counties. So you can see why they kind of want to have some idea because there might be 20 people there and there might be 50 people there. So so just get with Tammy if you're interested in going and, and she can notify the necessary people. I'm done. I had a fairly busy week. Uh, Wednesday evening, I went to the Ottawa regular uh, county com or city commission meetings. It was only an 18-minute meeting, but they had some exciting news. They issued uh, approval for $3.2 million in industrial revenue bonds for the re uh, rehab of the property located at 401 South Main Street, kind of the corner there that has legal offices now. Um, it's Josh Walker and his group, and the bottom floor is going to be a restaurant, shops, uh, as well as offices. And then the second <laughs> phase of it will be on the second floor, which hasn't been used in like 30 years, that they're going to convert it into either student housing or apartments. Um, pretty exciting for the, the city and the county uh, when they get that all done. I think they're, I'm not sure what their time frame is, but fairly soon and then on Thursday I went to the community partner um, meeting at the hospital to, and where officials from Advent Health came and kind of gave us an idea of their mission and uh, <coughs> what changes will be at the hospital, what changes won't. And it's kind of exciting because there are um, new specialty doctors that are wanting to come to Ottawa now and we might see some changes there on Friday, I went to the first forum meeting where uh, Leslie Bork from the Elizabeth Layton Center talked about mental health. And the first part, oh, she talked about mental health and about how, you know, really we need to, as a society, remove the stigma of mental health. So, you know, if you have a condition with your heart, you'll go to the doctor take care of it. Well, sometimes if you have a condition with your mental health, you, you don't. And we need to change that. Um, they have a new program advocate this is advocating the one in four where one in four people will sometime in their lifetime uh, have a problem with their mental health it's not me so it must be one of these guys or somebody else that you know you know somebody close to you that is going to sometime in their lifetime have a problem with mental health and then she shared the um, you know that what they're mission statement is in the services that they provide there at the Elizabeth Meetings Clayton Center. On Saturday morning, Princeton, the city of Princeton had their um, uh, biscuits and gravy breakfast and I went and volunteered there and met the people that were there. I, um, they had a lot of help so I got to help clear the dishes and got to, to meet people that came there. Um, on Monday, because I was going to be gone for the neighborhood revitalization, I went and they have several uh, applicants for that and, and hopefully they will have some, some new and improved properties in the, in the area. Um, and since, since I was there, I went to the Monday study session for the city of Ottawa. 
Uh, on Monday evening, I was at the Princeton um, City uh, meeting, and I, I'm going to just be honest and tell you I don't remember a lot of what we talked about, because I'll tell you why. But they talked about, um, you know, just a lot of the things that the city, city's dealing with. They have to do, you know, they're holding ponds, you know, what's going to take to re-rock them, what it should take, and that they don't have the money for that, you know, so they have to decide what they want to do. Um, Garfield School actually donated a lot of uh, equipment to their playground, and so they have that plus the new playground that's going in in July, so they're excited about that. Um, what else did we talk about? Anyway, so the meeting was not quite over, and the sirens went on. And I made, at that point, the, now what I realized was a poor decision to try to get home. Um, it's three and a half miles to my house from the city of Princeton, and I almost made it. Um, I was about a three quarters of the way, a three quarters of a mile from my house where when the rain was coming down so hard I could no longer see the road, and that's when the hail started. And um, so I waited out the storm on Eisenhower Road facing north, which is the direction that the hail, so when the hail started and then my uh, windshield started to crack, I made the decision to get in the back seat because I'm thinking if the, if the windshield cracks, I don't want to be sitting here. And my car was rocking and I'm very glad to be here today. Um, when it finally was over, I, you know, I'm a quarter mile. Well, actually, I got stuck in the road because I had pulled off, and then, you know, with all the rain, I couldn't get out, but my neighbor got me out, and uh, I got down to my road, and I turned on to Haskell, and I was like, am I on a road? Because the water was just coming at me. Um, so, and I'm like, I backed up, and I'm like, no, this is my road because my road sign is there in the ditch, which it, it was up today. I, I mean, that's awesome. You know, it went down Monday night. It's already back up. Anyway, I went back around, got to my house to find we have major damage. Um, we had broken windows, so we have water, hail, and glass in the house and in the garage and roof siding. My trees no longer have any leaves. But I'm alive, so heck, who cares? But so that means that yesterday I did not go to the retreat. I did make that decision to stay home and do cleaning. We didn't have any electricity, but you know what? My neighbors, I had people show up at my house I didn't even know that had, I had plywood up on my windows and cleaning. And anyway, I had uh, electricity came back on yesterday morning at 7 o'clock, which also was very awesome. Uh, one thing we don't have on our um, upcoming events is we have a combined luncheon next week, I believe, on the 15th. And if, is that the city, cities next time? We, we just know. had it, so it's city, I think. Oh, we just had one. Well, because well, we did it late because, or anyway, it's the 15th. At least that's what the city has on there. So anyway, that's all I have. That's next Wednesday? I think it's next that's Wednesday. That's next Wednesday. I believe so, yeah. We have five minutes on Commissioner Collins. Sorry. You know what? <laughs> they only gave me five. We, might, we might look into the. <laughs> hey, I didn't take any longer than these guys. Hey, when you're busy, you're busy. Okay. I attended the FCDC executive board meeting um, yesterday morning. It was very short. There were some people not there, so we had a couple people update on the strategic plan committees, um, talked a little bit about the director's search and where that's at, and, uh, what's going on with that. Um, they talked about the full board meeting that's coming up um, May the 16th. They really don't have anything on the agenda yet. They're going to look into a couple things, see if they can get a speaker. If they do, that will probably be on on May the 16th at 7.30. If they don't get a speaker, they may uh, not do that meeting and move it to the next month. So that was all that I've been to since uh, the last meeting. Um, anything else? There was something. Oh, I was going to make a comment. Correct me if I'm wrong. Just real quick on the, one of the public comments. The bridge over interstate on Montana is a KDOT bridge. It and uh, it's a KDOT bridge. And, and I they did, have it slated to be replaced. Uh, the bid opening should be in the October letting. So 
sometime after October, um, unless funding shifts and priorities change at KDOT, uh, that bridge will be replaced basically this winter, next spring, sometime. We also don't maintain it. What's that? It's their property. We don't maintain right. it anymore than you'd mow your neighbor's lawn. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one other thing. Uh, this for. <laughs> I can tell you that we talked a little about it. <laughs> I did make the minutes. So I got to do the co public comment, or no, to report for the county at the first variety forum, and I, and I had made the comment that when I became a county commission member in January, I thought I was the only woman on the county commission, but there was definitely another woman who just decided she was in charge, mm -hmm. and again, that was Mother Nature who just pretty much has. Pretty much dealt it to us. Yep. Roy, did you have something? Yeah, I just wanted to say this Friday uh, at City Hall, Richard Jackson's uh, reception, he's retiring. Uh, I think it's a two to four uh, Friday afternoon. Okay, Tammy, did you have something that you needed some help doing after the meeting? Did anybody get back with you? Uh, I am the only one that got back with me on delivering the baskets. You have some that need delivered after this meeting? I'm not doing more. I have vouchers to do. I'll get, I'll, I if you have time to help out a little bit there after the meeting, you might be with Tammy and get a couple of those. Or I could do them all. I'll get the band now. Okay. Anything else? If not, we'll look for a motion to adjourn. So we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? We're adjourned.